So far, I have analyzed novels and podcasts, and I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about a collection of short stories. Short stories are an excellent opportunity to experiment with form, point of view, and other aspects of writing. So I want to recommend Writers Read Self-Help by Lori Moore. In this collection, Moore demonstrates how second-person point of view can really work, the importance of author and character voices, and how moments can be just as impactful as fully flushed out scenes. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it leaves an impact on your readers the way Lori Moore's stories impact her readers. Because writing that impacts gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. Let's start with Walking in Another's Shoes. Six out of the nine stories in self-help are written in second person. The you voice works here because Moore is inviting her reader to experience another person's life through this second person perspective. She's not claiming that they are this character and that they would do, think, and say these things. She's saying, step into this character with me and experience life the way they do. The way Moore introduces this second person perspective is key to its success. She begins each of the second person stories by dropping the you pronoun and then slowly sprinkles it back in so the reader becomes aware that they're in this second person point of view. This allows the reader to slip into the second person perspective instead of having it thrust upon them right from the beginning. The first short story, How to Be an Other Woman, begins with me in expensive beige raincoats on a pea soupy night, like a detective movie. First, stand in front of Floor Shim's 57th Street window, press your face close to the glass, watch the fake velvet hummels inside revolving around the wingtips. Moore could have said, you meet in expensive beige raincoats, and you stand in front of the glass. But by dropping that you, she softens the abruptness and the jarring nature of second person. It makes the second person more subtle instead of having it jump up and down screaming and waving its arms saying, hey, look, you're the character. This also makes the second person perspective seem less like a dictation or command and more like something the reader is choosing to experience. By dropping the you, Moore is able to maintain this illusion of choice throughout the story. The other three out of the nine stories in self-help are written in first person and are accomplishing many of the same things that the second person point of view stories are, which is they are showing the reader these characters' thoughts and feelings and innermost desires in a way that the second person perspective is allowing the readers to experience. And this allows them to still walk in these characters' shoes even though it's not written in second person. And go like this, cancer-stricken Elizabeth thinks. I never question Elliot's reluctance to have sex with me. It is not the same body to him with his simple boyish perceptions of the physical. It's okay, I say, but I look at the curve of his bones, the freckled skin of his back, something wildly magical still, something precious. Here, the reader can feel the pain of Elizabeth's sexual rejection and her longing for her husband. We feel these things for her. We're experiencing these emotions with her. Intense emotion and inner thoughts are what really help the readers immerse themselves in these characters to experience their life, to walk in their shoes. Another aspect of self-help worth looking at is the author and character voices. Both second and first person require strong character voices because the characters are telling the stories themselves. Each woman featured in the stories in self-help has her own distinct voice. When you line them up together, you can tell which one is speaking. We we'll accomplish this through the form of the short stories, the word choice, and the diction of these characters. The woman who chooses to tell her story in reverse chronological order is very different from the woman who is telling the story of how far she's fallen or the woman who's showing how much she's changed since the beginning. The vocabulary of the child narrator in The Kid's Guide to Divorce is smaller and simpler than that of the character who chooses to use a shoe and go like this. Each distinct voice makes these characters stand out and it makes them feel like real people. And at the same time, 
the unique voice is reinforcing the fact that each one becomes a new pair of shoes that the reader can step into and experience instead of the same shoes over and over again. At the same time, Moore's author voice is distinct and recognizable within each of these stories. Her unique vocabulary, tone, syntax, and use of moments instead of scenes mark each story as her own. This is something all writers should strive to develop while recognizing it does take time. I think one of the greatest compliments an author can receive is someone saying, I knew this was yours without having to read your name on it. That doesn't mean that you're stuck with the same style and voice forever. It can still evolve and change. It just marks your shift from a writer who's mimicking others to someone who started to master the craft and develop their own way of writing. Next, I want to talk about how Moore uses moments instead of scenes in self-help. Many of the stories are composed of a series of moments instead of a series of fully fleshed out scenes. And this works because the stories in self-help are more character driven. These moments are key to the development of the characters. In How to Talk to Your Mother Notes, the character recounts moments in reverse chronological order from her life with her mother. For example, she says, 1972, Nixon wins by a landslide. Sometimes your mother calls you by her sister's name. Say, no mom, it's me, Virginia. Learn to repeat things. Learn that you have a way of knowing each other which somehow slips out and beyond the ways you have of not knowing each other at all. Make apple crisp for the first time. So these aren't scenes, they're more a list of facts. But the facts this character chooses to report and marks as important say a lot about who she is and who her mother is. She is recounting the important moments in her life. Using moments like this is a common technique in literary fiction, and it can be useful in all genres. A single line can say more than a fully fleshed out scene when it's set up properly. The you character showing that her mother doesn't recognize her is more poignant than the entire scene of her mother first not recognizing her. Moments can be stronger, more poignant, and more succinct. So when you're coming upon an important part in your own story, think about whether you need a full scene or if a single moment is all you need to show the reader. Would the scene or the moment be more impactful? I'd like to leave you with an editor's thoughts on self-help by Lori Moore. I usually prefer plot-driven stories. I don't find purely character-driven stories exciting. In self-help, Moore weaves in just enough plot to keep readers like me interested while still allowing the characters to take the reins and drive the story. Self-help is an excellent example of how to use second person. It invites readers into the story and into this other person's life and experience without forcing them and without forcing these characters' thoughts and actions and opinions upon them. Moore is saying, I know this isn't actually who you are, but pretend with me for a minute. Moore accomplishes this by minimizing her use of the you pronouns, giving each character a distinct voice, and focusing more on moments instead of fully fleshed out scenes. You can use these same techniques in your own writing. Think about it. How do you get your readers to walk in your character's shoes? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, like. Also subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing for more videos like this that show you the techniques writers are using to make their stories successful. That way you can transform your writing so it lingers with readers in the same way. Because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To learn more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. There you'll find a chart comparing the different points of views, their pros, cons, and definitions. Now it's your turn. Try using moments, second person point of view, and or strong character voices to ignite your ink.